Hi, I'm Emery Oderham, a PhD student at the University of Manchester studying materials for fusion energy. It's Friday the 7th of October and this is your fusion news update. Today's stories include 1. Fed commits $50 million for for-profit nuclear fusion companies, chasing the holy grail of clean energy. 2. Nuclear fusion plant to be built at West Burton A power station. 3. Z-pinch fusion moves closer to break even. 4. High Flux Neutron Facility launched at the University of Birmingham. 5. Princeton scientists overcome key setback in achieving nuclear fusion. And there are some bonuses for you at the end too. 1. Fed commits $50 million for full profit nuclear fusion companies, chasing the holy grail of clean energy. Now our first story this week takes a stateside, with the US government committing $50 million to full profit nuclear fusion companies in the form of public-private partnerships. Now we discussed these before, but this now represents a large part of the fusion funding that the US government gives out, which is normally earmarked for universities and national labs. At the Global Clean Energy Action Forum in Pittsburgh, the Department of Energy announced this new set of funding, with this making up a significant part of the annual fusion budget. Andrew Holland, CEO here at the Fusion Industry Association, spoke to CNBC, saying, this money signifies that the US government is getting serious about building a fusion program that will have commercial significance on an accelerated time frame. If the US government puts its full weight behind accelerating fusion energy to the grid, it could bring a transformational new energy source to the US. A really exciting change to the US policy there, and to echo what Andrew said, it sounds like the US government are getting really serious about commercialising fusion energy. Hopefully this is going to lead to many more stories that we'll report on here on this channel. Two nuclear fusion plant to be built at West Burton A power station. Now we've spoken a lot on this channel about the plethora of different siting options that the UK government have for STEP, their first energy producing fusion reactor. Now it's finally announced on Monday that the West Burton A power plant in Nottinghamshire is going to be the place of choice, replacing the old coal power station that's being decommissioned this year. The STEP project, or spherical tokamak for energy production, is the UK government's design for a first electrically generating fusion energy plant set to be operational by 2040. A spherical tokamak is a compact tokamak design similar to those used by FIA members, Commonwealth Fusion Systems and Tokamak Energy. It was announced by the Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, Jacob Rees-Mogg, at the Tory party conference where he said, over the decades, we have established ourselves as pioneers in fusion science, and as a country, our capability to surmount these obstacles is unparalleled, and I'm delighted to make an announcement of a vital step in that metoo. The plant will be the first of its kind, built by 2040 and capable of putting energy on the grid, and in doing so will prove commercial viability of fusion to the world. While some FIA members have set earlier deadlines, it's really important to see governments getting involved and really putting their weight behind it because it allows to not only the uh, pool of knowledge to be built up, but also things like infrastructure in order to build many of these plants. Three, Z-pinch fusion moves closer to break even. So FIA member Zap Energy have recently received a grant from the Centralia Coal Transition Board in order to assess the feasibility of their first power plant, citing itself for Transalta's big Hanover power plant in Washington state. Now this is Washington's last coal power plant, so it's part of this US-wide repowering initiative where renewable energy projects are being encouraged to be built on formerly contaminated mined or landfill sites. As Transalta transitions the site away from coal, Zap Energy are looking to use part of the old plant and integrate them into a fusion power plant design, saving both on cost and materials. Zap Energy are using the Z-pinch method where a line of plasma carrying an electrical current generates its own magnetic field, causing the plasma to become hot and dense as it's pinched. Zap Energy are really ramping up the kind of currents that they're using for their plant, with their next power plant, Fuse Q, hoping to reach the holy grail of break-even. And we're all going to be watching that one really, really closely. Four, High Flux Neutron Facility launched at the University of Birmingham. Now, a story that's really, really exciting to me as a material scientist, but also that I think is exciting in general, is this new high flux neutron test facility that they just opened at the University of Birmingham. Now, high flux means that we're going to get many neutrons per second, and that means that we're going to be able to emulate some of those neutrons produced in a fusion plasma that are going to impinge on our first wall of our reactor and damage our materials. Previously, we would have had to have really long studies of materials under neutron radiation, 
as lots of the facilities had a much lower flux. Or we would have had to emulate the damages with protons and other ions, which would give us an idea of what could happen to these materials, but not exactly what happened. Now we will be able to directly observe the effect of neutrons, meaning we can gain a better understanding into these effects. On fusion materials. Upon the announcement of this facility, Right Honourable Lord Willits, former Minister for Universities and Science, stated, I'm delighted to be opening this new facility in Birmingham, where I come from. It will operate at the far boundaries of scientific research and also be of enormous practical value for safe, sustainable nuclear power. A really exciting step for the UK building up is UK materials testing facilities. And as we move closer and closer to commercialisation and fusion, making more robust materials is going to be essential in order to make our fusion devices work, but also make them cost effective. Five, Princeton scientists overcome key setback in achieving nuclear fusion. To the world of academia now, with interesting engineering reporting on a press release by the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. In this, they set their sights on modelling what happens to the magnetic field lines when the plasma becomes unstable. As a reminder, common types of fusion energy devices such as tokamaks utilise magnetic fields to confine the plasma, but keeping it stable for a long time is one of the biggest challenges scientists face. We understand magnetic field lines as ordered lines, but in disruptions, these become disordered and connect to the wall of the device, causing massive amounts of thermal energy to be deposited against the material. Now, by simulating the effects of turbulence on the movement of particles in these magnetic field lines, they managed to understand the shape of these lines when they become distorted, when the plasma becomes unstable. Now, this turns out that it's in the form of valleying hills, and understanding this topology is really important in order to mitigate it. Dr. Yu, lead author of the study, stated, This research will provide new physical insights into how the plasma loses its energy towards the wall when there will be open magnetic field lines. The new understanding would be helpful to find innovative ways to mitigate or avoid thermal quenches and plasma disruptions in the future. Mitigating these disruptions is something we often talk about, and that's because it's so important in order for us to build a steady state fusion reactor, which is what a lot of these Tokamak designs are going for. Now, each of these small pieces of research is, be, is going to be the building blocks of our commercial fusion plant. And it's really great to see people just taking an interest in the individual projects alone. Now for the bonus. The Chloe Spring Summer Collection focuses on fusion energy. So the Chloe Spring Summer Collection was revealed in Paris um, for their Spring Summer 2023 line. Now it's not something we normally will comment on on fusion news, uh, but that designer Gabriella Hurst um, actually highlights fusion energy in this new collection. I thought it was something really interesting and definitely really surprising for me and I'm sure it was for you guys too. Um, so she's known to bring cultural and social issues to the forefront with a lot of her designs and this time she wanted to highlight climate change but also how fusion energy is a way that we can solve it. Her stated, in this chapter of climate success the focus of our research was fusion energy as a large-scale peaceful clean energy source. What I didn't expect to experience from our visits to ITER, Commonwealth Fusion Systems and Helion with the powerful passion that overtook me to tell the good news to everyone that would listen. The energy that moves our universe will, in the not so distant future, have power our world and solve many of our concerns. It's really great to see fusion kind of seeping into the mainstream and it's really great that these FIA members were so excited about it that they inspired her to get excited about it too. And I think that's really cool and definitely showed a lot about the energy that we have around fusion and the environment of the people working in there. Um, but that's everything for this week. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in and please remember to like and subscribe And if you want to catch any of the stories that we discussed, there's going to be links in the description below Thank you, and I'll see you soon